So today, this is Zenon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's typical of me. Um, so here we begin a series of vignettes to do with the school of alchemy. Basically, I'm going to turn that around. Yeah, I got it good. A school of alchemy, which is the school of transmutation. Basically, this is Zenon, the artist and alchemist. I'm going by the alchemist because I want to demonstrate something with this series of vignettes about a very, very whoops, esoteric subject which is called alchemy and what it really means as a hidden or esoteric or secret language of, of, um, of images and glyphs that basically tell a story of transmutation. And I'm a modern day alchemist, so I'm using art. And these original charts were created in Santa Cruz when I had uh, artists in residence up in Santa Cruz Mountains, thank goodness to uh, Gwendolyn or Laurie Grace, I mean, not Laurie Grace, Wendy Grace. And um, basically, I had the chance to do over a year ago in, in America when I was last there these alchemical maps these three alchemical maps which basically encoded the mystery. So this is my little home in Totnes. So I'm going to lead you kind of down the rabbit hole into a very esoteric subject and I'm going to make it practical by letting you understand how you disassemble the esoteric symbolic language into practicality and the harmonic axiom as above, so below, as within, so without. So in the original hermetic maps that I did, I did these scrolls, these language scrolls, at the top it just says return to the garden, basically. So this is exactly what I did, I returned to the garden and I went into full retreat to reveal this. And I've spent 24-7 the last 13 months putting my thesis together on alchemy and art and the creative process. And these vignettes are my gift to the world, especially to my friends who wondered whatever happened to me if they want to stay in touch. This is what I've been doing all along. I've been preparing a language template, which has been very intense. I've been working actually 8, 12, sometimes 16 hours a day. I've been completely inspired. But this is the original map, which is leading people from the tree of knowledge which we see at the beginning. When you see again, you'll see this constant reference to one gold ring, which is the alchemical container, to a tree of life. And we know, recognize those archetypes because they're in the Bible in the beginning and end. So it is definitely a, we're de demystifying the, the, the essential codes in the Bible, not the ones that this journey to the tree of life at the end, which is St. John's Revelation, if you want to go into the cha last two chapters, you'll see the heavenly template. And you'll see encoded between the 12 rings, you'll see this serpent energy, this ring energy and these spirals. Uh, obviously, the chakra of no the nervous system, the uh, what I call the pillar of light, the central pillar of the nervous system. So these fields were revealed from a patterned language, basically, into the rings of a tree, into an original language that's encoded in rings, circles, and spirals. And then from that went into actual language. So this is very, very deep stuff. But the reason I'm sharing this is because of the activation of the encodements. This is language basically has consumed me over my life. I have a 50 year portfolio in America and now I've returned to England. So it's kind of England is a place of origin because I'm born in Nottingham. And these many people know that I was a master in stained glass art. So this is more recent. These are my a very small section of 11 master images. This is the Magdalene on the left, the mother of the world, Nicholas Roy work, the pilgrimage, and the Kuan Yin and Golden Dolphins, that's in the iridescent. 
graphs and then that's the caduceus the seven chakra system this was done 40 years ago one of my first commissions so i have a very active portfolio in glass and then these are the silks i produced in bali so i've been very very prolific but i haven't been ever really putting a marketing so this is the design of the of the round table so this is my central thesis the round table of course because i work under merlin the seer and so this original design was in Winchester in England and represents the four elements, earth, water, fire, and air. So you have the four elements, earth, water is the moon, fire is the triangle, and air. I put, use that as a six-pointed star or seal of Solomon. So I'm talking in symbolic law, L-O-R-E. This is the mystical rose. This is the five petals of the mystical rose. It's in the center of the round table. It's the original twist of the round table it represents the hermetic or western mysteries the rose the roses for the west like the lotuses for the east so these are just things to catalyze what is the memory of a western school a lot of the mystery set societies were of course wiped out by the church and we have a long heritage of a secret societies on the planet this, is, this has become my little alchemical chamber in Totnes, southern England, in Devon. And thanks to graciousness. And I've been working here on kind of actually finishing the scrolls, which I've just finished the 12th scroll, which has been extremely intense, to bring in from these higher fields of energy. So this is my place. These are, the, again, the mother of the world, the pilgrimage. This is the medicine wheel I did in glass. And, we produce them in fabric in, in um, banner. So my whole life becomes a set of symbols, basically. These are the three rings now compressed into a grail mythology, the, the grail, the sword, and the stone. So everything has meaning. Everything has a story. The Magdalene was taken from Glastonbury, England. Anybody knows about the grail mysteries knows of Glastonbury, of course. So encoded in all of my glass was a story and a patent language. But I'm at a place in my life as an elder that I'm synthesizing all the information that I've gathered over this lifetime. I'm a two of diamonds, if anybody knows the card, so I'm called the Wheeler Dealer card because I like to network and co-create in partnership. But this has been a very arduous, singular journey. And all is what Jung talked about, the individuation process my friends drink a lot of water, please, because the language of fire requires a lot of water. So this is my, just my s simple drag little room here where I kind of store everything and live. But I live very simply and there isn't, I'm kind of consumed by this, this process which I'm going to share on these vignettes now. I'm going to give this to the world. I live a symbolic Ceremonial life, everything to me is ceremonial, and these are the these are the new charts. So we've done set twelve scrolls. We're making these images available, and they depict the journey into the world tree, which is the summation of my myth and story. So this is one of the scrolls that uh, you'll see the trunk of the tree, and these ancient codified symbols that actually. I, everything just gets created spontaneously. I don't have an agenda. It just re represents itself. But you'll see the rings within rings, circles within circles, spirals within spirals within this language, which is a testimony to a process. So my life's been the process. I call it alchemy and the art because basically I've spent my life researching it. How have I researched it? Through creation to a field of creation in other words people read books i read from a higher field all my life spontaneously this is done one of my original commissions the caduceus 40 years ago so i knew this encodement when i came in at a very young age and was kind of initiated into the mysteries at age 28 and I was given a book at that time, which is a full Saturn return, 
to do with Jakob Baum and the language of alchemy.